A very good morning to you boys and girls. It's sun Saturday. No, it's not Sunday. Saturday. I'm very nervous this morning. I'll come to that in a minute. It's Saturday the 27th of May 2017 and a warm welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom talk coming as always from the Mirable studio in Royal Berkshire without ident at the beginning. How unprofessional there is. Now, I'm a little bit nervous this morning. I'm doing something new today. To no, I'm not about to take off my clothes. Don't worry about that. But this morning, we are going to record two bits for a radio. Now, uh, the name of the station is Upload Radio. It's not a paid radio job. In fact, it costs me to go on there. It's a new DAB station in um, southwest London and Surrey. I can pick it up here as well in Berkshire. And they're offering anyone to go on the radio if they want to. It costs 20 quid. 20 quid to do this, OK? And I've been looking into it, and I can write that off against advertising because, of course, I mentioned my karaoke's and all that. So that's what I'm going to be doing this morning, at least for the first session. Now, I've got to do two 29-minute segments, exactly 29 minutes. So that's what I'm going to do this morning. I'm going to start off. Good morning, Mark. Mark's there. He's the governor at um, at the Cams and I, where we are on Sundays now, OK? Uh, yes, so I'll record the two segments and we'll see how we go. A little bit of a jingle to start with. And I'll start off by talking a little bit about myself. Not that I always do that, you know. But people won't know the hell who I am. So I thought I'd better do a little bit of an introduction. And if you keep an eye on the Facebook wall, it will tell you when it's on. As well as being on DAB, um, uh, you'll be able to listen on the internet as well. So we'll see how we go this morning. So I, I don't think there's any point in hanging around. I've got a little timer. And I, I don't know if you can see this. Just a minute. Can you see that? No. There's a little timer there. It gives me 29 minutes. So I've got to hit that. And, um, and just do it. Where's the start button? <laughs> I want a start button on there, don't I, somewhere? Hang on a minute, there must be a start button on there. Is there a start button? <laughs> it's just a clock. Well, there must be a start button on there. How do you start the damn thing? God's sake, man. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, no, set. Set. Ah, there's, there we are. We've set that now. Do you, do, could you see that when it got bigger? Yeah, I think you can. See that thing there? But it's a little bit too big. Oh, let me just make that smaller now. And I should be able to record two 20 minutes. There will be a, a phone line open as well, boys and girls. OK, uh, if you want to call in, uh, the number will come up there on the screen for you. And uh, we'll see how we go. All right. So ready? You'll get the little video thing that you missed a minute ago first. And then we start. OK, here we go. And a very good morning to you. Good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're listening. This is Chris Reardon with United Kingdom Talk, our first ever, uh, shall we say, venture into Upload Radio, boys and girls. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about a bit, a little bit about myself. If you're listening on Upload Radio, I'm Chris Reardon. I am uh, 54 years old, and I live in Bracknell, Berkshire. I was brought up in Southwest London, where indeed uh, Upload Radio is uh, is uh, mainly listened to. I think. I uh, Live down in Bracknell. Uh, sort of in between the M3 and the M4. Wonderful places to be at the moment. If you ever travelling around the M3 and the M4 at night are wonderful places because they keep digging the damn thing up, don't they? How annoying is that? Every time I go down one way or the other, you get so far. Oh, it's, oh, it's open. To, and you get there and you're being diverted down to, down to Chobham again. Oh, anyway, so that's that's a little bit about me. Uh, I got into radio. The first radio stuff I did, I was uh, about 16 years old. And I had a little bedroom set up. Two record players in a bedroom, OK? Connected, not with real switches. I didn't have switches. I had paper clips and drawing pins. And to switch from one record play to the other, I used to swap the swap the paper clip over uh, and there were kind of connections on drawing pins. Wires going down into the living room. That was my own little radio station. Yes, it was. And then we extended to my neighbour's house and two wires came out of my front door and went right 
outside our balcony where we lived in Roehampton, lived on the, the Orton, Orton Estate in Roehampton, uh, in one of the red red brick long buildings there. Came out the house and went into my neighbour's door and onto a little speaker, soldered, soldered onto the end of the wire uh, in her kitchen with a switch on off. And she used to listen. And when I used to start, a pro there was no microphones. I, used to, I just used to play records through the wires. And I would start, I would start a record. OK, and then I would go as a little boy and quietly listen outside. That's what we did when we were 16 then. Not going around knifing people like they are now. No, we all had little radio stations and went and played football. I don't know what went wrong. And I would listen at my neighbour's door to check that she wasn't listening. Uh, she was listening. Mrs. Waller, who was also a member of our Cub Scout group as well. She was, oh, what was her name in the Cubs? She wasn't an Arcala. She was, um, oh, I can't remember now. Mowgli, was she Mowgli? No, maybe not Mowgli. The bear, what was the bear? When you were in the Cubs, Cubs, do your best. We will do our best. What was what was her name? I can't remember now. Oh, anyway, the little wires came out the house. Into, and if she wasn't listening, I'd knock on her. Oh, Mrs. Waller? Yeah, I've got my radio station on there. Do you want to switch it on? Yeah, I'll do it in a minute. Do you want me to come in and switch it on for you? You know, just in case she, she wasn't going to do it. And she used to, I used to go and switch the speaker on. And then I'd go back. And a few minutes later, I'd go back and to check to see that the speaker was still on. And then we extended even further. Yes, uh, the wires came out of the house. And as well as going right, they went left as well to my neighbour on the left. Two listeners now. And then it extended one more house further. Now, there was another block of flats um, next to our block, but it went across a road. Now, these weren't flats that were like 20 storeys high. These were only two storeys high. So, uh, I mean, each flat had a downstairs and upstairs. So it was only one on top of the other, like masonettes, you know. So this, so I then, I then chucked, I had a friend living in the block next door to me. I had a, a ball of wire and we waited till there were no cars coming and I chucked the ball over ball of wire to him and he caught it and then we had a wire going from the two blocks to each other with yet another speaker at the end. Of course, eventually the amplifier blew up. <laughs> it couldn't take all these speakers, but never mind. That's how I started into radio. And then uh, later on, I had a pirate radio station, Southwest Radio it's called, um, and a friend of mine who also had a, park, uh, a, a, a pirate radio, uh, Parkside Radio, he made transmitters. <clears throat> I was amazed by this because I'm not very good at doing stuff like that, making stuff. I can talk. I think I can talk anyway. But I can't make things. And he used to actually make transmitters out of little bits of wire and soldering and a, a little PCB board and all that business. And he made me a... Now, it wasn't very stable. Now and again, the frequency would wobble a bit. And people listening to other stations may well have got interference. <laughs> this was when I was 16 years old. But nevertheless, uh, we did it and um, pirate radio and that's how it started. Sometime into doing that, the police got hold of this and, uh, and took all my stuff away. Unfortunately, but that's the way it goes, you know. You expect to get caught. I had a big area on the roof, literally on the roof of my bedroom. I had this uh, dipole area, which is like a, a stick with two bits of metal and a wire in the middle. That used to carry out the, the radio programmes. Um, after that, there was a bit of a gap. And then uh, much, much later on, when the internet was born, uh, I started doing a music show on Live 365. Now, this was like the main internet radio kind of hub type thing. And over time, more and more stations came on to this Live 365 thing. And you could click on and listen to whatever you wanted. You know, um, uh, pop music, talk, politics, religious, current affair, whatever you wanted, it was on Live 365. And again, and, and I did a show on there. Um, while I was doing that, another internet radio station, brand new at the time, came along and liked what I did. They were CMP Radio, one of the first ever internet stations. I'm sure there were others, but that was what, certainly one of the first. And indeed, it did feature on the BBC News 24 at the time. So uh, they came to me and I started doing a little show for them. And that was all music. I, I didn't do talk. I didn't do talk. It was music and I talked in between the records. Gradually, I realised that I was talking more and more 
and playing less and less music. And I've got a few heroes in the world of talk radio. One is no longer sadly with us, uh, Mike Dickin, who was just, he was just such a dry sense of humour and he never used to suffer fools. He really did. He was great. He was. Uh, we lost him a few years ago. Uh, now I still have some heroes. Uh, Steve Allen on LBC Radio, I think, is just excellent. Um, who's the guy on it? Like Clive Ball. Excellent. Again on LBC. And who's the other one? Uh, Nick Abbott, who's on at the weekends. I, I love them. There are some on there I can't stand with boring voices. I've got to tell you. But those three I particularly love. And I thought, I'll give it a go and just do a chat show. And I did. I just did one. I literally, and I made sure I couldn't cheat. I put all my records in other, oh, CDs they were. Oh, no CDs now, is there? We'll just push a button and the music comes out. How clever is that? How clever is that? I can have a little stick with me. And on this stick is more records than I ever carried around when I was doing a mobile disco. How clever is that? How, how comes, right, here's a question for you. How comes, no matter how much music you put on one of those little sticks, it doesn't get any heavier, does it? Isn't that strange? And yet when you went to buy records, the more records in a bag, the heavier it got. Not on a stick. You can, you can put 200 records on a stick and it still weighs the same. How strange, how strange and mysterious that is, isn't it? Yes. Anyway. So that's that. And I put all my records away, all my CDs away, and I opened the mic and I just talked for an hour. And I kind of liked it. So then I started doing a little talk show on that station. Unfortunately, it kind of folded just a few weeks later. And then I did nothing. Um, a little bit further down the line, I started doing podcasts of talking. I did another music and talk show on another online station called Offshore Music Radio, which played um, uh, 60s and 70s at the time. But I was kind of going more and more towards the talking, just chatting away like you as a friend and what have you. Um, so I did podcasts. So I did podcasts. And then eventually someone said to me, why don't you put a little camera in front of you? Oh, I don't know about that. <clears throat> Um, uh, but I did, and I stuck a webcam in front of me and started talking to a webcam, and ever since then, I've been doing these video talk shows. Of course, if you're listening on Upload Radio, you won't be able to see the video, but I do do this as a kind of video-y, TV-y type show. I sit in a little studio, which I've kind of decked out. There's a mirror ball hanging behind me, usually some sort of picture behind me, which today is like a, a, a picture of the seaside, all blue and... Um, uh, lighthouses and little houses, little beach huts. I like beach huts, don't you? Aren't they dear? You can play hundreds of thousands of pounds for a beach hut. Why would you want a beach hut anyway? You can't live in one, can you? you know, just to change your knickers, girls. Just to change your knickers on the beach somewhere so that no one else can see you. Oh, for God's sake, go and get yourself a big towel. I think, I think I need a very big towel at the moment, which hopefully that will change soon as I'm going to Slimmer's World on Tuesday. I think it's Tuesday I'm going next week. I'm hoping to go to Slimmer's World. Anyway, back to this thing. So um, I now do a video show and it's actually on most days. Now, I never set a time. I don't set a time. I just, when I've got time, I go on and do it. Generally, I suppose... Most of the time, it's round about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning. But I do do it at other time. And you can watch that if you join up on my uh, on my Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. That's my Facebook. I've got Twitter as well, but I don't really use it. I've never, ever got the hang of Twitter. So many nice people have asked me, um, uh, have tried to explain to me how to use Twitter. And I cannot make head or tail of it. I'm sorry. I can't. It's most, most annoying. So mainly all my stuff is on Facebook and you can find me there, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. So today on Upload, Upload Radio, you're listening to Saturday's show that I was doing as a video show. Now, while I'm doing my video shows, people can call in on the phone uh, and they can send me messages. So I always read out the messages which are coming up now. Uh, thank you very much for your messages. Those of you watching on Facebook Live, let's say good morning to Ray Reynolds International, who says good morning, Heidi High Campus. Heidi High, Heidi. Oh, I miss all those wonderful programs, don't you? Huh? Heidi High. 
Are you being... T- I thought the reboot done by um, an excellent writer, who I happen to know, actually, Darren Litton, who wrote the reboot of the, the one episode of Are You Being Served? I thought that was excellent. And I do hope that the BBC, in their glory and wisdom, BBC, I hope they make a new series of Are You Being Served? with the characters that Darren Litton used on that. It was excellent. And in colour, if possible. BBC One Colour, yes. Good morning to Elaine, who joins us this morning in Israel. Good morning, Elaine. Hope you're well today. Uh, Shania's with us. Dino Trace is there. Good morning, Dino. And those of you who are sharing the video on your Facebook wall, once again, thank you very much for that. I appreciate that. Um, Diane is with us. Good morning, Diane. Elaine says you need no introduction. I do, because the people on Upload Radio will have not a clue who I am. They will have switched on and think there was something very strange going on this morning or this afternoon or this evening, depending what time it gets played out. So there we are. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. Kevin Webster's with us this morning. Good morning, Kevin. Simon Hampton. Morning, uh, Simon. Terry says, are you going on DAB? Yes. Yes. I am going on DA, but do try and pay full attention, Terry. Upload radio. Have a look at it. Upload radio. It's not, it's an unpaid job. We actually pay to go on there. But I think it's a good idea, so I'm going to give it a go, OK? Uh, hopefully, I do a, 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 a one show a week on Upload Radio, which will kind of be the recording of this. Uh, the difference is I have to make two 29-minute segments, Terry, you see? So that's what we're doing. We're doing part one at the moment. Um, Ray Reynolds says, are you sponsored by Mr. Sheen as the Chris Reardon show is so polished? Oh, please do me a favour. Polished? This? Are you serious? I just sit in here and chat away rubbish for half an hour or so, don't I, Ray? See, the format of the show is, uh, uh, the, what I like the format to be is that you and me all, we're sitting around a little table and having a bit of a chat. That's what I do. I generally don't really do serious stuff, as you know. You know, I could sit here and chat about the terrible, terrible things that happened in Manchester on Monday. Um, but I think other people probably do that better than me. I'm, I'm a bit lighthearted. Sometimes I have a bit of a strong view. You know, I might might come out, might touch on it occasionally, get you thinking a little bit. But generally, you know, um, I think you've got to be very intelligent to talk about some of these things. Of, or I, ha I have an opinion, of course. You know, I've got an opinion. But um, often people said, uh, why haven't you tried LBC? I'm not intelligent enough to be on LBC. I'm really not. I'm just a normal chap sitting here in a little room, chatting away for some strange reason to himself. And yourself, of course. Good morning to John Aitken. Morning, John. Uh, from a very cloudy Shepherd's Bush. Oh, my God. Shepherd's Bush. I had to go around that green yesterday. Shepherd's Bush green. Last night, I was going around there at about... I was on my way to work because I host karaoke as well. Um, I'll tell you about that in uh, probably in the second half, OK, where I do karaoke nights and a quiz night as well. Um, but uh, Friday night, I was going around Shepherd's Bush. Would have been about... About seven o'clock at night. Oh, my God, the traffic there. And, of course, a little bit of sun. Shepherd's Bush Green. You can't see the grass. What a mess that is. And these disgusting, ghastly people. They're on there with sandwiches and tins, which I don't mind. Tins of stuff. But they leave it all on the grass. Ghastly, dreadful, disgusting people. Pick up your blooming rubbish and take it with you. What is wrong with people? God's sake, man. And you see, you know, sometimes you're driving out and on the motor. You don't dare get too close to the to the to the car full of people in front of you. Out they come, bits of sandwich wrapper, tin cans, McDonald's boxes, out the window on the motorway. Dirty, disgusting people. And there they all were yesterday on the Shepherd's Bush Green. Leaving their rubbish everywhere. If you are one of those people that was on there and took your rubbish home yesterday and didn't leave anything on there, not even a little bit of wee, right? Because I have a feeling people are weeing on there as well. And it's not nice if people are going to sit there. If you took your rubbish home and didn't wee on that grass, then I'd like to a round of applause. That is excellent. Excellent. Please take your disgusting rubbish home with you. Uh, John says apparently we're going to have uh, thunderstorms. That I hope not because I've left the cat in the garden. <laughs> it's not raining now, is it? Well, hang on a minute, let me have a look. <laughs> it was bad enough. Do you remember that was bad? 
I tell you what, it is looking a little bit, and I'll better leave that curtain open a little bit, because I gen I have to I close my curtains in here um, when I'm doing the show. Otherwise, it it looks brighter on one side of my face. Those of you watching in video than it does on the other. I'll keep an eye on that. I'll put the cat outside uh, because I have an incontinent cat. Her name's Katie, and she hasn't pooed this morning. Now, I have an area of the kitchen which is covered in newspaper, okay? And she and you, generally, she's gone by the morning, but the trouble is she walks round and round in circles. She's 18 years old. She's very old. Yeah, I, I mean, I've started doing it myself now. Sometimes it takes me an hour to get out of the room. I've gone round in circles for an hour, just like the cat. Just to be sort of with the cat, you know, we are one sort of thing. One of those we are one type things. Um, so she hadn't been this morning. Now, if I catch her early enough and she hasn't been, I can put her in the garden and she'd go out there. And then it's just a kind of a, you know, it's just a kind of a thing of, of picking up poo with the poo scraper type thing, placing it in a, in, 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 a, in a piece of newspaper and straight in the bin. No problem at all. You don't think I'd chuck it over the fence, do you? God's sake, I'd be, I'd be worse than the people in Shepherd's Bush weeing on the grass. Awful. Ghastly people. I mean, the problem, I think the main problem with Shepherd's Bush is there's no Waitrose there. If you haven't got a Waitrose in an area, it does tend to bring the wrong sort of people in. I'm sorry it does. They need a wait. If you get a waitrose in Shepherd's Bush, none of that has stopped. In fact, people won't even go on the grass. There'll be flowers blooming and little little bulbs and daffodils and snowdrops coming up. No, no, at the moment, no. They've got that children's play area where I've seen drug dealing going on there. I have, as I've driven round. And the thing is, it's so obvious. Do not go to Shepherd's Bush, boys and girls. Very dangerous area ghastly people and the traffic doesn't move either <laughs> dear me um morning to carl morning to carl our, our, our carl is a hairdresser a very very good and he does celebrities you know probably you know he wants to do something with my hair i don't know although there's a big shiny bit in the middle now carl do you think i could have hair implants put in there <clears throat> That's quite a painful thing, isn't it, to have hair implants? I don't know. Uh, morning to Mif uh, Richard Matthews. Morning, Richard. Um, Terry says, live 365. Her not heard that in a while. Yes, I th I have a feed. Can you look at Someone look that up. Live 365. I don't even think they are on anymore. I'm not sure. Or they had a bit of a problem with copyright issues in America, I think. So I think they had to stop. A lot of what they did there, unfortunately. Uh, good morning to Adam the Plumber. Morning, Adam. Who's a year older this week. He had his birthday uh, on Tuesday, which I forgot, unfortunately. Well, I remembered Monday, but I forgot when I was doing my Tuesday show on Facebook, wasn't it? Don't forget, you can join me on Facebook Live. Either become a friend or just hit a follow, OK? Uh, Chris Reardon UK. Facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Um, good morning to Sarita. Morning, Sarita, who loves the painting uh, that's behind me. That's the one of the kind of um, the seaside, the view. We like the seaside, don't we? We do. Elaine says, I use a flash drive for my radio show. It's so convenient and less cumbersome than carrying CDs. Yes, indeed, it is, uh, Elaine. Can I just give you a little... Uh, Elaine does a radio show on... I think it's a community radio station in one of the towns in Israel. Uh, called the the Light Lounge, the Music Lounge, something like that, isn't it, my darling? Uh, can I just give you a little tip there, Elaine? Your flash drive, whatever you've got on it, triple it up. So have exactly the same on three drives, because there's a good chance that one day you're going to get to that state radio station with all your music on the flash drive, you plug it in, and it come up as, like, not recognised or can't find it. Triple it up. Not double, triple. Go and get yourself two more flash drives, and whenever you make one flash drive, copy all the stuff from one onto the other, and you can't go wrong, my darling. You see, I'm full of tips. Full of tips. Full of tips. If you've got any questions at all on anything at all, you can phone in this morning. Uh, not if you're listening on Upload Radio, because obviously you're listening to a recording of the show, but there is a phone number. If you're watching on Facebook Live, the phone number is 0208144 You don't have to call in. If you're quite happy to just sit there and listen to me rabbit away, that's good as well, OK? But phone number 0208144 I've also got Skype. My Skype name is, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. 
Okay, so once again, phone number 020 8144 And the Skype in is United Kingdom Talk, only if you're watching on Facebook. If you're listening on Upload Radio, remember you're listening to a recording, so you can't call in. Although if you call in, if you do call in, I might even be there to answer. We'll have a private conversation. Nothing rude, mind. I don't do rudeness. Not on this family-based programme. Thank you. Uh, morning to Gary Butler. He's with us this morning up in Lincolnshire. Ray says uh, he loves Jason Rosam on BBC uh, Radio London. Yes, he's on there. Is he on at night time there? I can't remember when he's on there. I've not met him. Not met him. Carl is with us. Good morning, Carl Rex Mawson over in central London there. Morning, Carl. Uh, James says, Chris, talking of your radio show, how did you come across all of your equipment? You must have spent quite a bit. Um, well... To do a radio, I've, I've, you've probably got some of the stuff I've got here anyway. All right, so presumably you've got a computer. I have two in here. Not, not madly, um, they're not professional. They're just normal bog standard computers that I use to do my shows with. Uh, but uh, they are quite high spec. So, you know, there's a lot of memory in them and a lot of, um, processor i think it's an is it an i7 i'm not too i'm not really into computers i'm a computer user i've no real interest in how they work or anything like that i think the chip is an i7 in both of those um i've also got an amplifier which i'm sure you've got in your house um i've got microphones uh microphones these are like proper uh, uh, diaphragm microphones, Bay Ringer B2 Pro, if you want to look them up, okay? Uh, these are about 10 years old, okay? Little, little, little tip for you here, little tip for your ear, James. Don't buy cheap, never buy cheap audio stuff. Never buy cheap audios. If you've got a wife, you know, that's fine. Buy her a cheap cooker, buy cheap microwave, cheap knives and forks, plates, anything for the kitchen, cheap, cheap, cheap. For yourself, my friend, you need to buy expensive audio equipment. <laughs> don't buy, don't ever buy cheap audio equipment. You will be so disappointed eventually. Oh, I wish I'd spent the extra 50 pounds. Spend the extra 50 pounds, my friend. <clears throat> you know, if there's a microphone you want that's 400 pounds and you've only got 100 pounds, don't buy the 100 pound microphone. Save up. And you'll be so pleased you did. That is my advice to you. Never, ever buy cheap audio equipment. I've got a mixer next to me. Uh, that's a Bayringer one. I quite like their stuff. Bayringer uh, stuff is sort of fairly... It's very reasonably priced, actually. I never had a problem with any of it. I've got a very old amplifier over there, a Sony amplifier, uh, which uh, actually was given to me by a bloke I used to work with, uh, uh, Jace, uh, Justin, who, were, who who runs, he owns uh, the Steamcoach pub in Hemel Hempstead. So there's an amplifier there. Um, and that's it, isn't it? There's a, there's a couple of lights in here, um, big lights um, with, like, umbrellas. And those bulbs in there are quite bright. It is very bright in here. That's for the sort of webcams. You wouldn't need any of that if you were doing radio, of course. Um, but uh, uh, all that stuff's really for the audio. So, no, I don't think I've spent that much money in here. The mirror ball, I've got a mirror ball churning behind me. Well, that was about 30 quid. You'd be very surprised how cheap mirror balls are. They're one of the cheapest effects you can have. And I don't, I don't think there's ever been any kind of disco light that is as good as a mirror ball i think it's a wonderful effect i really did and when you've got like a pink and yellow light on there and it's it's in perhaps just in a bedroom or in a nightclub nothing beats a mirror ball i've seen also i've seen lasers bounced onto mirror balls and it really is a fantastic effect because they all these little lines are darting out everywhere <clears throat> um especially got a bit of smoke there they had a massive laser at a club I used to go to in Clerkenwell, which it's gone now, sadly replaced by, a, you know, another, yet another block of blooming offices. I don't know if there's flats there as well. Actually, I think there is flats there, maybe flats on top, but offices downstairs and flats upstairs. Uh, the club was called Turnmills. I went to a club called, uh, the name of the club was Turnmills, and the nights were that I went to were trade, 
uh, FF and Warriors. They did also have a club there called Melt, but that was a little bit too too much. It was really banging, and there was no kind of build up. You know, you would walk in there. Generally, if you walk into a club, I like a bit of a build up. You know, so it starts. I don't know, at five mile an hour and finishes at 200 mile an hour. But there you'd walk in and it would be 200 mile an hour straight away. But I used to love Trade and uh, FF and Warriors. Music they used to play, there was Hard House, Hardcore and Techno. Bang, 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 bang. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. A lot of people are surprised when I say that because they do know my love of the greats. Best entertainer this world has ever had, Mr. Barry Manilow. Looks like we made it. La da 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 da. I made it through the rain and kept my world protected. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. I did that at the karaoke last night. Yes, karaoke. When is the last time you sung at a karaoke, James? I want you to come and sing at karaoke nights for me. Oh, we had some good singers last night, actually. I'll tell you about the karaoke later. Um, but uh, new people as well. It's always great to get new people at karaoke nights, don't you think? And karaoke is not about, and I've said this so many times before, it's not about... What a good singer you are. If you come on the stage and you're a little bit, you know, sure of yourself, uh, uh, then, then it can be a bit of a bit of a bit of a turn off. Actually, it can be a bit of a turn off. Karaoke is all about having a go. If you're a great singer, then fantastic. Just don't tell everyone that you are. Just get on and bloom and do it. But it's not about that. It's all about having a go. And it's I just love doing them. I so much prefer karaoke to DJ. I'm almost given up my DJing completely. So where do I do karaoke? I'll let you know after this short break. Chris Reardon on United Kingdom Talk. <laughs> I, <coughs> I didn't expect a bell to go off <laughs> I reckon I'll be able to cut that bell out, actually. There we are. That's the first 29 minutes. First 20 minutes. We're going to do another 29 minutes. And I'll come back to your um, uh, your uh, your messages here, OK? All right, so I'm going to start off again. Let me clear that. You ready for part two? I, I wish I had a blooming glass of water or something in here like that. Never mind. I haven't got a glass of water. <clears throat> right, let's do part two. It's good, isn't it? Like, like we're able to do this together. Oh, it's a bit hot in here. No air conditioning. The bloke hasn't called back. I can't believe it. Here we go, then. Just clear my throat. And welcome back. It's Chris Reardon with United Kingdom Talk. We were just talking about karaoke there, boys and girls. And I do several karaoke nights, actually. Uh, my main one, I suppose you could say, is at Central Station Bar, which is in King's Cross in London. Now, that's a gay bar, but all are welcome. Anyone, and in, indeed anyone comes. You know, I don't know why they... I mean, it's, it was always a gay bar. It's more mixed now, to be honest. But uh, you'd have a good time if you came there. Now, I do karaoke at Central Station in King's Cross uh, London every Monday night with cheap drinks. That's between 8 and 11.30, so not too late. Still time to get home and go to bed, OK? And uh, also on Fridays there I do karaoke, and that's 8.30 until midnight. We have a great time there. It was great last night. It was really good last night. I think we had 22 singers in the end, and uh, everyone came up and had a go. Uh, I also have just started doing a karaoke in Camden Town. Now, that's at the Camden Eye. Lovely place, the Camden Eye. It's, um, it's quite, I would say it's quite a young place. You know, when, no, uh, young, young, not young in age, young in atmosphere. Do you, do you sort of see what I mean? It's quite loud, quite loud. Um, the sound system is very, very good in there. And that's on Sundays between 8pm and 11pm. So, you know, every every Sunday. So it's every Sunday, 8pm to 11pm at the Camden Eye in Camden Town. And every Friday night 
uh, between 8.30 and midnight. And Monday night between 8 p.m. and 11.30 p.m. with cheap drinks at Central Station in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Now, I actually, I am looking. I also do a little quiz night. My quiz night is at the King's Head Theatre Bar. Now, that's that's in Islington in London. That's every Wednesday between 8.30 and 10.30. We're not too serious. I don't do serious. It's all very light-hearted. We have a little bit of a laugh, and you're welcome to come down there completely free. All these things I do, obviously, I get a very, very small wage from the various venues concerned, but all these things I do for you are free to come to. All right? It's even free to enter the quiz night was at the King's Head Theatre Bar in Islington. That's even free. Two prizes, a £30 bar tab is your main prize, and uh, the second prize is a bottle of wine. So that's Wednesdays, 8.30 to, uh, to 10.30. Now, I do have a free Thursday coming up. So if anyone wants a little quiz night or a karaoke, not DJing, OK? I'm done with the DJing. I'm done with the DJing. But if anyone wants a little quiz night or, or karaoke night done, on a Thursday night, you know someone that wants one done. I'd really appreciate a little message, perhaps on my Facebook, uh, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK, or, or by email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. If you, if you know of somewhere, it's not too far from me. When I say not too far, you know, I travel. I travel, just not 10 hours. You know, please, if you think of somewhere that's in Edinburgh, I might not take that one. Unless, of course, you're willing to pay a thousand pounds for me to get there and back, and a chauffeur driven, a chauffeur driven, uh, what, what are those big vans? The Willy, Willy Bago, Willy Vago, Dago, Mago, I can't think what they're called now. They're like a coach, but they've got beds and all that in the back. Because what you could do, if it was sort of on a Thursday, you could pick me up. If it's in Edinburgh, you could pick me up in your Willy. Bago or whatever it's called, you know the the coach with the with the with the beds and the TVs and the 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 showers and all that. I could be picked up from my quiz night at ten thirty to get up to Scotland for my karaoke night on Thursdays. I'm liking the sound of that. Yes, complete with meals, vegetarian of course, vegetarian. Yes, that's that. Right, let's go back to some of your um, messages here. So I'm looking for a Thursday night at the moment. If you know of a Thursday night, someone that might want a quiz night or a karaoke, please uh, send us a message on the Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Chris in the UK or email chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right. Uh, good morning to Wolfgang in Germany, who's enjoying the show today. Is this the first time you've joined us for a chat show, Wolfgang? I think it might well be. You're usually there for the karaoke because I do stream the karaoke as well. Again, that's on Facebook. We stream the karaoke there and uh, watch all the people having a wonderful time. Um, Elaine wants to know what's a Waitrose. Oh, Elaine, you don't know what Waitrose is. Only the world's best supermarket here with fantastic customer services and wonderful things that you don't find in those other tacky little supermarkets anywhere, lovey. Although other supermarkets, <laughs> remember, this is only my personal opinions and not necessarily the opinions of the radio station concerned. You can go in Sainsbury's, you can go in Tesco's, but I'm sorry, in my experience, you do not get the customer service that you get in Waitrose. Certainly not in Bracknell, dear. Oh, those wonderful people on the uh, customer services area. Now, let me think. There's uh, Jackie. She used to work at Sainsbury's, actually. There's Jackie on customer services. There's the lovely Linda, the delightful Linda. And there's, uh, I have to say, our favourite lady, Michelle, who I haven't seen for a few weeks. I'm not sure she's very well. I'm going to I'm gonna have to inquire. There's Michelle. If you go to the Wokingham Waitrose, there's dear, dear Mary on the till. Oh, I love Mary. And and the lads are good to look at as well. Oh, my God, the lads that work in Waitrose. I don't know where they find them, but they're gorgeous. All of them. There are no ugly lads working in Waitrose. You've got to go to some of the other supermarkets to see those. Where, what would you rather want to look at? Yeah, would you be honest? You know, would you rather save a little bit of money in a cheap supermarket, or would you like to go, girls, and look at nice lads in Waitrose while you're getting that tin of baked beans, or your spaghetti arabata sauce, or your wholemeal spaghetti? Where can you get wholemeal spaghetti? Have you seen that where you go shopping? No, only in Waitrose. I should be doing this program needs to be sponsored by Waitrose. <laughs> 
<laughs> David says it's a posh supermarket. Correct, David. Are you allowed in there? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning to Mark Newton. Morning, Mark. John says we have a huge Marks and Spencers, though, in Westfield, where I get 20% discount. Well, who are you sleeping with to get 20% discount there, then? Huh? <laughs> he gets 20% discount because the other half designs for them. Oh, does he? What, designs little packets and things like that? I never forget. Now, what was his name? Uh, Richard. Richard was in there. Now, Richard used to be a dancer and he used to come into a pub that I DJ'd at. Well, I still DJ out there at the moment, but I'm about to leave because <coughs> they're going to three o'clock. And I'm too old to work till three in the morning now. I don't want to do it. Nope. In fact, two is too late. My, my, my preferred time of finishing is now midnight. Midnight. I don't do too bad on my finishing times. Here's my finishing times at the moment, right? Sunday, 11. Monday, 11.30. Tuesday off. Wednesday, 10.30. Thursday, 2 a.m. Would become 3 a.m. had I have not been decided, no, I'm not going to go till 3 a.m. Goodbye. Thursday, midnight. Saturday, midnight. Sorry, Friday, midnight. Saturday, midnight. So I don't do too bad. So you see there's a huge difference of two hours between my latest one and my... And, and, and the one next down to it. So so that's going to become three o'clock. And then the, that's when I go. Um, yes, but uh, the the bloke, he, uh, bloke used to come in there called Richard. He was a dancer. He designed stuff, probably like your, your man. And one of the things he designed was the cream ball in Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know that one? The cream ball, which is basically this piece of plastic with a hole in the top that they fill up with ice cream. And I'll never forget, he came into the bum, he said, oh yeah, I, uh, we were talking about Kentucky. I said, well, I only ever go in there for their ice creams. Because they I d actually, I don't think they do them anymore. I'm not sure. But they used to do Mr. Whippy ice creams. You can't beat a Mr. Whippy ice cream, dear, can you? We love them. Mr. Whippy ice creams. <clears throat> They're in a bit of plastic. And as soon as he said that to me, I said, I said well, that's not very good for the environment. And he, he just didn't get it. What do you mean? I said, well, that plastic, so you eat your ice cream, throw it away. It's going to be there for 200 years. How is that good? No, nope, not impressed. I think he walked, around, walked away a little disgruntled, really. I'm sorry, I must speak my mind, dear. I must speak my mind. Although perhaps not as much as that. Who was the one who got sacked this week from the radio? What was her name? Katie Hopkins. She got sacked. Oh, dear, dear me. You can't say those sort of things, my dear. God's sake, woman. How can you say that stuff on the radio? You can't. She got sacked. So there is a line that we can't cross. There is a line that we can't. And we shouldn't cross anywhere. Shouldn't even think those things. Shouldn't even think those things. Thank you, John. Um, uh, Elaine. Ah, oh, Lane's Lounge is the radio show that Elaine does in Israel. Thank you, Elaine. Carl says, uh, is the other Carl on here too, as I'm not a hairdresser? Yes, he was earlier. He pops on and off. I think he, he listens to the show for about a minute and then he gets fed up with my voice. That can happen occasionally, I've heard from other people. Hello to Debbie Burke Scott, who's listening in America today. Hello, Debbie. Um, uh, <laughs> Elaine says, don't quit your day job, Chris. <laughs> Shania says, how can you cope without your air conditioning? Ah, well, Shania, it's, it's the office. Now, I have a big proper air conditioning up on my roof, a base, you know, this studio is a spare bedroom, okay, that I've done out, right? And I've got this air, a Mitsubishi, you know, professional, in professionally installed air conditioning. And it's been there about 12 years, ever since I was on CM. It, I put it in when I was doing CMP radio, actually. But that broke down a while ago. Um, it broke down, well, when I, when I turned it on, I realised it wasn't working. A bloke came out on Tuesday... Um, from, uh, where was he from? Hughes Refrigeration, I think it was. And uh, he came, I mean, give him his due. I rang up at nine o'clock. At 10.30, he was here. Unbelievable, wonderful service. He was here at 10.30. He spent about an hour doing bits and he eventually said the compressor's gone outside. They can order one, but it's quite an expensive piece of kit. Um, with the fact that everything else is 12 years old, you might want to consider just putting a whole new system in. So I was going to do that. Right, So that was on Wednesday. The office will get in touch with you with a quote. Well, Thursday, Friday. Hello, it's Saturday now. Nothing's come through the post. Very disappointing. 
Here I am, sweating, boys. I'm sw I'm stinking today. Oh, oh, <laughs> I'm just smelt under my armpits. <laughs> oh, God's sake! Any awful people with bo? <gasps> if if you're a commuter, maybe you're out in Surrey listening. Um, if you're a commuter and you have to get on that chain next to smelly, disgusting, ghastly people. <laughs> it's just awful, isn't it? Just awful. Mm. I, 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 I did notice that yesterday I was smelling a little bit while I was doing my karaoke at Central Station. I, I kind of, you know, provocatively opened two of my buttons on my shirt, at which point the entire audience, like, swoon. Wow. They were like that. Wow. Because I do have a body of an Adonis. You know Cristiano Ronaldo, that very gorgeous football player, who I am desperately in love with? You know, I'm sure, I'm sure he knows about me now. And it's just a matter of time before my little telephone rings. Hello? Cristiano. Cristiano. Because it'd be broke. It doesn't speak English very well, does he? Doesn't speak English very well. Hey, Cristiano, you want to come for drinky drinky? I think he might say drinky drinky. And I will say yesy yesy so that he can understand me, you see. I, th I think that will happen at some point. Cristiano Ronaldo will ring me for a date. And I am ready, boys and girls. Every day I go out with clean underwear on, I do. And a clean handkerchief. Always important to have a clean handkerchief or tissues. Little tissues. I've got a pair here. Look at these. Little tissues are standing by. Should I need to mop my brow from the beads of sweat that are here because of the sweat that I'm creating while I'm chatting away to you this morning? Yes. Good morning to Alan Russell who joins us. Morning, Ashel. Alan. <clears throat> So that's the air conditioner. So I'm waiting for a quote. Now, funnily enough, at uh, almost exactly the same time, my wheel around air conditioning thing in the bedroom, that has stopped working as well. When you stand in front of it, you're kind of getting this blow. It, it blows, but it doesn't cool. You know, and to be honest, at my age, blowing is no longer good enough. Blowing, blowing on its own is no longer good enough. I need a bit of cold as well. It's all very well saying, hello, you know, let's turn this on, have a bit of a blow. Well, that's no good. It doesn't, it doesn't do it. It's all right if you're standing right in front of it, which you have to, you know, if you want to be blown, you've got to stand right in front of it. But you move back and you can't feel it anymore. You know, you've gone too far away from it. You need to have the cold being pumped out into your room. Fortunately, the one in the bedroom is a wheel around one. So it's just a case of taking the tube off, chucking it away and going down to uh, uh, somewhere and buying a new one. I, I got mine from home base yesterday. They had two. Was it yesterday or the day? No, day before yesterday. So I went straight down there, no mucking around. They had two. They had a small one, which I thought might do the bedroom, but it was only half the size of the other one. So I thought, oh, I'm not sure about this. Anyway, so I'm in home base, right? I've gone through the till. I'm through the till. I'm paying for this thing. I said, did you have a larger one somewhere? I'm sure I saw a larger one. She said, let's have a look. What's that one? She said, oh, well, that's 8,000 BTU. I don't know what that is, dear. Eight th is that something foreign? Is that like a European thing? 8,000 BTU. You know, we won't have any of this when we come out of Europe, dear. All this foreign talk, centigrade and blooming kilograms, that's all going to go. You know that, don't you? It's all going to go. <laughs> There's, there will be no foreign... Theresa May, I am sure I heard her say, I might have misheard, that there's going to be nothing foreign in this country uh, when it comes to restaurants, anything like that. They're all being closed down. Chips or everywhere. We're only allowed chips. There will be chip shops, left, right, no kebab shops, no pizza places, no Chinese food, no Indian, nothing. Only chips. Chips, 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 chips. Maybe sausages as well. Preferably vegetarian sausages, because we don't... Uh, I, I don't know what it is, but I just don't fancy the idea of a mashed up dead animal in a bit of skin entering my body. I'm sorry, I don't care how well it's cooked, how soft or hard it is. I do not want a mashed up bit of dead animal in a skin entering my body. I'm sorry, I don't. Vegetarian is the way to go. 
anyway, so I went to home base. So I've got the small one and I've paid for it now. I said, do you do another one? So then she said, yes, I've already, but I'm tapping my pen code into the machine, you know, 1763. And she made, picked up the phone. Oh, have you got one of the larger? Oh, yeah. No. Anyway, so I put the phone. Out. I said, well, I'll try this one. Out. And I'm going out. I'm just about to go out the door. She says, oh, the bloke's got one here. And this bloke had arrived and he's looking at me quizzically now. He's looking at me quizzically now, wondering what, why he's been cooled down with this large air conditioning. So I came back and I had a look. I said, oh, I don't know. And I was a bit indecisive. Now, I'm not an indecisive person. My mate on the my best mate Ron is very very indecisive. He can never make up his mind. Let me tell you, he's filled in a post. Oh, did you hear that clip? That's my calendar going around. He filled in his postal vote. He hasn't sent it off yet, and he's actually now thinking of sending off for another one because he thinks he's changed his mind. I won't tell you who he's voting for. All I'm telling you that. At the moment, I'm happy with his vote. I might be very disappointed. I might have to uh, distribute... What's the word? Uh, I might have to excommunicate him from my friendship circle if he puts that cross somewhere else. <laughs> he may have to be excommunicated from United Kingdom talk. I'm sorry it's the only way to deal with these people. It really is. So, back to the air conditioning... So this large one's there, and I'm, oh, I, oh, do you know what, I don't know. And then I thought, you know what, if I buy one that's too small, you can't do anything about it. You can't turn, I mean, I could take it back. She's already said I could take it back. If it's not powerful enough, I could bring it back, no problem. But you don't want to do that, do you? You don't want to get this blooming great big thing and put it back in the car. And it takes two people to carry this. I mean, you can do it with one, just a, 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 a real struggle. You need two people. You do. And I, look, I said, you know what? If it's too small, it may not be powerful enough and I can't do anything about it. If it's too big, I can just turn it down. So I then went back to the, I said, I'll tell you what, can I change it for the other one? She said, she said, have you got the receipt? I said, no, I've lost it already. And she laughed. Nice girl when Sainz was, and she was quite young as well. Very nice. Trouble is you can't speak to the young girls on the, they all think you're, you're chatting them up. Hello, maybe your boyfriend, not me, love. Not me. <laughs> so I then paid the extra money. It was only 70 pound difference anyway, between the small one and the large one. And I got the big one, bought it in here, Attached, unfortunately, one of the tubes, the, the outlet tube on the new one was bigger than the tube coming out of my wall for the old one. So what I've done is put the big one, I've cut the, the, the little one back a bit and put the big tube over the little tube and used gaffer tape, which thinks it, gaffer tape is one of, one of the best things ever this world has invented. Gaffer tape is fantastic. You need gaffer tape in your house. And it fixes anything, anything. Holes in the wall, don't bother with filler, bit of gaffer tape. No one's going to see the little lines around the side, are they? Put a picture in front of it, dear. <laughs> You're not going to call a builder out to fix a couple of holes, are you? No, roll a gaffer tape. Five quid from B&Q or wherever. Wix. So that's my air conditioning story at the moment. It's surprising, actually, they're actually quite difficult to get hold of now. I mean, the shops are doing them, but they used to have, I'm sure, like B&Q and Wix had a selection of um, of air conditioning units. Now they've got just got like one or two. They had two in home base. They had this 8,000 one and the 12,000 one. And 12,000 one is more powerful than the 8,000 one. I've used it a few times already now. Oh, it's wonderful. There's something about when it's a really hot day and you turn it on, I don't know, 20 minutes before you go into the room, you close the window close the door, close the curtains, and then you go in there for an afternoon nap. And it's lovely and cool. Lovely and cool. <laughs> um, let's have a look. Elaine says, I'll remember not to keep you up too late when we go clubbing in Israel. I hope we do, but not past 12 o'clock, please, Elaine, if you don't mind. <laughs> ah, John says his other half designs uh, clothes, mainly children's clothes. Okay. Frozen and Spider-Man. Oh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man does whatever a spider can. Spinning webs, any size, does whatever a spider can. Watch out. Here comes the Spider-Man. Ah, 
Ah! In the chill of night, at the scene of a crime, he arrives... And it goes on and on, doesn't it? And Frozen. Oh, God. If you go to Disney World, that's all you hear as you're walking around the Disney theme parks. ba 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 let it go, let it go. Please go as far away from me as you can. Go, woman, go. What's happened to all the other wonderful Disney songs in Disney? It's just frozen everywhere. Frozen, frozen, frozen. Oh, look at Lisa. What's her name, Elisa? Elisa? Elisa. Elisa? I don't know what her name is. Whatever happened to the lovely Sleeping Beauty and the Princess? I'm Walla, ba ba ba, for the one I love. To find him, to find him today, today. Oh, is that Sleeping Beauty or is that the other one? Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Are we still allowed to call them dwarfs in this politically correct world? Load of rubbish, dear. Yes, they're dwarfs. No, they're not. They're small people. No, they're not. They're dwarfs. We're up to see the wizard, the munchkins. More of them, dwarfs. We're up to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Da -ha, da -da 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 -da. Follow the yellow brick. Oh, I love them all, darling. Wonderful, wonderful children's programmes. Thank you. Duke says, where are you tonight? Well, it's Saturday night. I should be DJing tonight, Duke, at Central Station. Are you coming? You're going to come and hold my hand with me? Huh? I'd like to hold your hand, Duke. I really would love it. Yes. Uh, Elsa, thank you. Elsa and Anna. Thank you, Richard. Elsa, that's the one in Frozen. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Have you ever been to Disney and tried to buy one of the little Frozen dresses for perhaps a little girl of your, that you know? Maybe your daughter, your, your niece, something like that. Have you seen the price of those? 70 quid for a bit of dyed neck curtain? I could make those here. <laughs> Ghastly prices. Euro Disney, I'm telling you, that is so expensive. I went in November, took my nephew and his family to the Euro Disney. It was a bit pricey, the hotel and all that, but you kind of accept that, you know, you, and then you think you've paid your allotment until you get through the gates. God, the price of the food and things, just things that you buy. Little thing, a balloon. A balloon. How much do you think a balloon was? Three balloons I bought my um, my my uh, great great nephew and my two great nieces. Three balloons, twenty five quid. I kid you not. Of course, part of the problem is the the euro to the pound thing. You know, but you must remember our pounds are far superior to those nasty little euro things. What are they? Have you seen European money? Have you seen it? Christ, it looks like it's come out of a board game. Dreadful. Dreadful. And who are those people in the pictures? I don't recognise any of them. Where is the Queen? Land of hope and glory. Where's the Queen? Don't understand that at all. <laughs> Ashley says we wish Chris would be frozen. Yeah, but Ashley, if I was frozen, I wouldn't be able to talk. Oh, you're not thinking about being frozen, are you, Ashley? Cryogenics, isn't it? Is it cryogenic? Something like that. Oh, that's frightening, isn't it? <laughs> so uh, I think uh, you're not frozen before you die. I don't think they're allowed to do that yet, are they? But that, that'll come. That'll come, I guarantee you. I think, and you can kind of understand it in a way, uh, people who are, are dying, uh, possibly through some dreadful, awful, uh, incurable disease, cancer comes to mind, you know, something like that, uh, and they die and they are immediately frozen immediately, in the hope that sometime in the future we will have the technology to, number one, be able to unfrozen, not unfrozen, unfreeze them, thaw, thaw them back to life, and two, fix whatever's gone wrong with them. Cancer, heart attack, something like that, you know. I mean, if you was to die because your body had been mainly eaten by a crocodile or a shark, I very much doubt they could do anything then. By then, there would only possibly be an eyeball to be frozen. And I don't think you'd want to live as just an eyeball, would you? I mean, what would you do? You'd just sit there and look. Wouldn't you? Although some of the people I know, I tell you, they can do wonderful things with their eyes, the way they look at you. One of my great nieces, Emily, she's got this face when she's angry. And it is, she's three years old. It, and let me tell you, it is scary. It even scares my niece, Tracy. She's got, 
she, she screws her face up and gives you a look. It's scary. <laughs> the thing is, when they freeze you with these cryogenics, how do you know that you can't feel it? Maybe you die, and after a while, perhaps, I don't know how for long, you can still feel things. Okay, you might not be able to move, see, or speak. What if you can still feel things? And they put you in that liquid nitrogen, don't they? And bring you down to so many degrees below zero. <clears throat> what if you can still feel that? Oh, my God, it doesn't worth it. Is it worth it? Are you going to be frozen, Ashley? Ashley said, do you just defrost them when you're ready to wake them? <laughs> Quite possibly, I don't know. Richard said, I have a two and a half year old and that's one of her favourites, but she really loves the classics as well. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love, I love the, um, I love Frozen. I love all, most of the, all, almost all the Disney stuff. Uh, I just don't understand why you go, you go to Disney and you, it, it's obvious that that's the one they've chosen to keep playing. My personal favourite Disney was da -da 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 -da, The Little Mermaid. Under the sea, under the sea. Oh, I love it, dear. If I was a Disney witch, I would want to be Ursula. Yes. Poor unfortunate souls in pain, in need. That one wants to be thinner. That one wants to get the man. And do I help them? Yes, indeed. I do that at karaoke, Richard. I absolutely do that one at karaoke. Thank you very much. Yes. We do like to do some Disney at karaoke. Perhaps you'll come along to one of my karaoke nights, will you? You know when the next one is tomorrow night, Sunday night, at the Camden Eye in Camden Town from 8 to 11 o'clock, all right? Well, uh, stay there if you're watching on Facebook Live on Upload Radio. We're about to finish. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed my little chats. I'd really appreciate your ear from me if you'd like me to upload one show a week or something like that. Uh, send us an email in, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, uh, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, or indeed uh, you can follow me on Facebook. Facebook dot com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Enjoy your day here on Upload Radio and I'll see you soon. Bye bye now. Right, done. Done. What do you think of that? <laughs> Hang on, I've got to stop the recording now. Stop recording. And that's it. Good. Let it go. Let it go. What do you think of that then? That worked all right, didn't it? I hope so anyway. Except it doesn't look like it's recorded. <laughs> God, so... Oh, it works so hard. That's OK. I can get it off the video anyway, the, the audio of that. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Something a little bit different for us today, boys and girls. Uh, Elaine says, well done. Thank you, Elaine. Uh, Ashley says, Toy Story is the undisputed heavyweight champion of the Disney world. What sort of toys do you have, Ashley? Just some nice little toys at home? I like electric train sets, I do. Anyway, gang, let's do... Oh, Richard does Under the Sea as well. The one I do is Poor Unfortunate Souls. That's the one I do at karaoke. I think I might do that. I might do that tomorrow in Camden Town. Yes, indeed. Let's do today's birthdays, boys and girls. Uh, happy birthday today for... One moment, please. Oh, did, were we here yesterday? Did I do birthdays yesterday? No, I don't think I did, did I? I don't think I did. OK, so I'll do today's birthdays first. Happy birthday to the delightful Ben Scott, who always seems to be uh, popping in on the shows now and again. Happy birthday, Ben. OK, my darling. Uh, John Wright tonight is 40 years old. Uh, John Wright today. James Waddy Love is 35 today. He's got a little bit of a little bit of a that that. Uh, what's that hair where it sticks up in the middle? Mohican. I had one of those, James. And then it all fell out, unfortunately. Oh, well. You win some, you lose one. Uh, Tom Lodge is 58 today. Dean Voltaggio is 32. He does a lot of computer stuff. He's been involved a lot with uh, internet radio. Happy birthday, Dean. I'm still here doing it. Still here, mate. Um, Fitch Fitch is 54 years old today. Happy birthday to Fitch Fitch. Uh, yesterday's birthdays, we must do those as well. 
because uh, we weren't here yesterday. One moment, please. There we are. So Friday's birthdays, Stephen John. Happy birthday to Stephen John for yesterday, for Friday yesterday. Annette Jeb, happy birthday yesterday. Shirley Isabella Wayne, happy birthday, Shirley. Uh, Lord Mark Anthony, he's the guy who cleans my windows. Mark, greetings, Mark, and happy birthday for yesterday. Next time you come round, uh, as well as my windows, you need to do my solar panels as well. We are, they're covered in pollen, dear. Oh, those naughty old plants, they keep blowing. Them. We're back to the blowing again, aren't we? Blowing the pollen everywhere. Uh, happy birthday, Mark. Uh, Kalida Parveen. Happy birthday, Kalida. Hope I've uh, said your name right there, my darling. Ray Davis. Happy birthday, Ray. Happy birthday, Ray. David J. James. Happy birthday, David. Jason Nixon. Tash David. Nikki Dunn and Jordan James. They're all the birthdays today, boys and girls. Let me sing for you. Oh, one, hang on, wrong button. One minute, one minute, one minute. Here we are. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. All right. Happy birthday, boys and girls. Have a wonderful time. Or if it was yesterday, I hope you had a nice time yesterday. That's it for the show today. Uh, Heidi says, are you going to open the phone lines? Uh, we were, They were. They were earlier, Heidi. You missed it, dear. You missed the phone line in opportunity. It's gone now. The time has passed. We've moved on, I'm afraid. Sorry, Heidi. You missed it, darling. Uh, Richard Matthews says, I might start singing, You're Welcome from Mona. <laughs> and Ashley says, How can you forget Donald Trump's birthday today? How old is he now? God's sake, he must be even older than me, is he? He's got to be about 80, isn't he, Donald Trump? He looks it, doesn't he? Never mind. I hope I don't look like that when I'm his age. Oh, I will be disappointed. That's it for the show today. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I'll see you again very soon. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye now.